I believe the only way that we can live a life that we love is if we learn how to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. So tonight we want to talk about, in essence, hearing from God, being guided by God, learning how to go with the Spirit rather than the flesh. God always has a better idea than we do. He always has a better plan than we do. And we're usually going to have two ways that we can go in most every situation. We can go with our flesh, or we can go with God. And the flesh equals misery of every kind. <laughs> God equals joy and peace and a life you can love. Let me repeat myself. The flesh equals misery of every kind. Now, that we, if, you, if you say, what do you mean the flesh? The flesh is just you, me, just us, you know, just... I'm going to do what I want to, I'm going to end up miserable. <laughs> but if I'm going to follow God, then I'm going to end up with a life of peace and joy. How many of you have already spent a fair amount of time doing what you wanted to and found out it made you miserable? Okay. That's why you're here tonight. <laughs> you're ready for a change, or you've made a change and you want to learn more about how to live the life that Jesus died to give you. So I think we need to stop wishing. <laughs> I wish I was in better shape. <laughs> I wish I felt better. I wish I had your house. I wish I looked like you. I wish I had your job. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. I looked up the word wish today in the dictionary, and the, the first definition I came apart, across was this. I looked it up online. A desire that something that cannot and probably will not, a desire for something that cannot and probably will not ever happen. <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting. See? So uh, let, let me just step out of the box here and tell you something that I am tired of hearing. I wish the government would. Okay, so let, let's just, just, you know, pamper me for a minute and let's play a little game. Let's just say that this half of the room over here says, well, I wish that the government would provide free education. Well, guess what? If they did, they'd have to get this half of the room to pay for it. <laughs> Here's the thing. We keep wanting the government to do something for us, and we need to get our eyes off the government and back on God. Can I please give you a revelation? The government cannot give you anything that it doesn't take away from somebody else. And so there's so much talk today about injustice. Where's the justice in that? Well, I wish, well, well, I deserve, well, you know what? <laughs> Everybody just needs to buck up and do what they need to do. God has provided a good life for every single one of us, and every single one of us can have it if every single one of us will follow God. Now, I'm not saying that there are not people that need help, because there are people that need help, and the Bible's very clear about helping the poor, but God wants the church to help the poor. He never, ever, ever even wanted Israel to have a king. He wanted to be their king, and he wants to be our king now, and he doesn't want us looking to anything outside of him to take care of us, and he wants us to be guided and led by his Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will guide us into a life that is so amazing that we, it, we will just, our mouths will just drop open with awe and what God will do for us. How many of you believe that? So let, let's get hate out of our language. Let's stop wishing. 
and let's start doing. I've been saying for a long time, we don't need wishbone, we need backbone. <laughs> Amen? And let's get more love in our language, and let's begin to love one another more and build one another up. Amen? So now we're going to talk about turning it all over to God, laying it on the line. God, here I am. You created me. I belong to you. I'm sorry for all the time that I've drifted away and tried to do things on my own, but I want to make a turnaround tonight, Lord, and I don't want to just be some kind of a lukewarm Christian that just goes to church and goes home and goes to church and goes home and nothing ever changes in my life. I want to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, saying the right thing. And I'm not smart enough to do that if you don't help me. <laughs> Anybody believe that? See, things got better for me when I finally realized I wasn't smart enough to run my own life. I wasn't even smart enough to run my own life, and I was trying to run everybody else's too. Come on, some of you just like to get in everybody else's business. You're not even take care of your own business very good. I love you. We're never going to live a life that we love unless we learn how to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have to be bold in order to follow the Holy Spirit. Everything that I'm doing today is a result of stepping out and doing things that I felt really strongly in my heart that God wanted me to do, but that I had no real proof of until I stepped out and found out. So I'm not at all suggesting that people just do a bunch of crazy, radical things that make no sense, but I am telling you that you're going to live a very narrow life if you're so careful and so fearful of ever making a mistake that you won't ever step out of the boat and try to do anything else. Peter was the only one who walked on water, but he was the only one who got out of the boat. Everybody else stayed in the safe zone. And I still am amazed when I look back at some of the things that I felt like God led me to do, and I'm like, was I nuts? I mean, was I totally crazy? And yet I've seen in my own life what God can do through any plain, ordinary, simple-minded person who will open up their life to him and say, come on, God, let's get on with the plan that you have for my life and give me the courage to step out. Now, how do you learn to hear from God? Boy, that's a big one everybody wants to know. Somebody ask a, a minister that, one of these old guys, you know, that were so great that we get to read books about. I, someday, maybe I'll be one of those old ladies that people read books about. I don't know. But we, we seem to think somebody knows more if they're dead. I'm not real sure why we're like that. But, you know, and, and even the longer they've been dead, the more we tend to respect them. So this this guy that I read, he'd been dead like a long time, so I'm going to believe that he really knew what he was talking about. And he said, people want to know, they asked me, how did you learn how to hear from God? He said, the answer is by making mistakes. <laughs> Come on. You take a step. And if it's a stupid one, it won't take long and you'll know it. But if you take a step, you really believe that's what God's leading you to do. You take a step and it just doesn't work. Then all you got to do is step back and say, well, that's not the direction to go. You know, let's just say that maybe you just, you really feel like you need a change in your life. You want to get a different job. You want to get a different career, but you don't. You're kind of afraid because you make good money, and so you just keep staying there because you're just like, well, you know, no, no. you want to go, but you stay, and you want to go, but you stay. And so then pretty soon, because you're staying and not going, now you're starting to dislike everybody. You dislike the place. You don't like the boss. You don't like the work. Now you... So 
what I would do if I were you is pray, God, I feel like I need a change. Open a door for me. Now, that doesn't mean you can just sit back somewhere and just, just wait for somebody to come along and say, I'd like to hire you in my company. But while you're praying and while you're not complaining and while you're loving God and serving him, you begin to look. You don't have to quit your job and not have one. You begin to look while you've still got this one. And if it's what you're supposed to do, God will open the right door for you and you'll have peace about it at the right time. But I think so many people live such little lives because they're just unhappy and they just don't do anything about it except blame somebody else or wish, I wish. And we have to stop that. You have got God living on the inside of you. You have courage, you have boldness, you have wisdom. And you can have a wonderful, wonderful life. I heard a story just last week, and this is a true story, about a young man that graduated from college, and uh, he had studied in a certain field, and he was offered a great job in the field that he had studied in. And it was a good paying job. It was like the perfect job. He was amazed. And of course, he wanted the job. But the closer it got to taking it, for some reason that did not make any sense to him. He just didn't feel like it was what he was supposed to do. He wanted to, but he didn't feel like it was right. Have you ever had that where you want, I mean, you really want to. There's a part of you that wants to, but down deeper, you're just like, and you, and you know, it's, it's actually kind of irritating to us because we don't know why. If God would just tell us why. <laughs> but I want to do this and the door's open and it's going to be good. <laughs> and so why do I feel this way? Well, you know, God knows things that we don't know. Okay, you want to hear the rest of that guy's testimony? Four months later, the Twin Towers were hit and that's where his job would have been. You know, um, Sometimes I'll be riding in the car with somebody, and of course, I always think I know where I'm going and how they should get there. And uh, I've had occasions where maybe all of a sudden they're going some way that I'm thinking, where in the world are you going? You ever feel like that with God? You think you know where you're going, and then all of a sudden you're like, where in the world were you going? This isn't the way. 
this isn't the way. And sometimes so then I'll question the driver and they'll say, oh, I can see here on my GPS that there's a wreck up ahead. And so it's guiding me to take a different route. You know what GPS is for the believer? God's protection and guidance system. <laughs> and we've all got a holy GPS on the inside of us, and it's down deep in our spirits. And just like sometimes a good driver will look ahead and see that there's a problem up ahead and take a different route and miss a huge problem, God will guide us many times to take a different route that doesn't make any sense to us because he knows what's up ahead. Let me tell you something. The wisest thing that any one of us can do is learn. to pay attention to what's going on deep down inside of us and not just live off the top of our heads or off of our fleshly emotions. I had a situation in this past year um, where I decided I wanted to move. One of, a couple of my kids were going to move and we were going to get some property and we were going to all move on the side. We just had this great plan, you know. Well, Dave never was for it to begin with, and so that should have been a clue right there that it wasn't real good, but, you know, I used my female persuasion, and I talked him into it, and uh, Dave's just like, well, you know, I don't want to do that, but I can be happy anywhere, and so, you know, I, I, so I got this whole plan going, and I was excited. Can I tell you something? Excitement doesn't equate to it being God's will. And I could have done it. It wasn't that I couldn't have done it. But when I got into it, when the excitement died down, there was no real peace, no real desire. I didn't want the work. I didn't want to mess with it. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to build. 
got down to it. I got to look at my house. I thought, why in the world would I want to move? Got a great view, got a good house. Of course, you know Dave, he's like, I told you. you know? <laughs> I told you. But because I had gotten myself into this, it took me a while to decide to back out. And so finally, I just had to say, you know what? I just didn't hear from God. And you know what? Don't ever be the kind of person that won't say, I just didn't hear from God. I made a mistake. I did not hear from God. You and I have to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, or we are going to have nothing but misery in our lives. And just because I want something, that doesn't mean it's God guiding me. Now, if we're going to be guided, led by the Holy Spirit, we have to understand that he's not always going to lead us to the place where we think we would like to be. <laughs> so let's look. Look at Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led in by the Holy Spirit for during 40 days in the wilderness and the desert where he was tempted, tried, tested exceedingly by the devil wasn't a mistake. The Holy Spirit led him there. <laughs> he led him into a desert. He led him in a wilderness. He led him into a hard time <laughs> where he was going to have to face off with the enemy and win a battle. You know what? Sometimes before any one of us can do what God wants us to do, we have to learn how to stand our ground and fight the enemy and win battles. Because let me tell you something, if you think you've got a battle on the level where you're on and you're wanting to go to another level, I can tell you what, new level always brings a new devil. So you got to have some victory on this one where you're at before you go to the next one. Amen? And the interesting thing about this was he had all these different temptations come against him. Of course, he passed every single test. And I love what it says. I'm not exactly sure what verse it is, but somewhere around 13 or something like that. It ends up saying that when, when he was finished with that, he came out full of power, full of the Holy Ghost, and began to do many signs and miracles and wonders. And so you might be in a hard place right now, but please listen to me. It may be the very training that you need to get you to the next place where God's going to take you. Would somebody please listen to me today? You may feel like you're going in the totally wrong direction because it's not the direction you would plan, but if we keep our trust in God, He can get us to where we need to be, right place, right time. Now listen to what I'm going to say. With the right experience that we need.
do what God's asking us to do. I'm going to tell you what, I don't care how much education somebody's got. We all like somebody's got a little bit of experience. The Bible says that Jesus gained experience through the things which he suffered, and it equipped him for his office as high priest. We need experience to be equipped. That's the one great thing I can say about getting older. I'm not willing to use the word old yet, but older. Here's the thing. I know a lot more than I did when I started. That's one of the reasons why the Bible tells us that we should listen to our elders and respect them. Now, not everybody who lives a long time has any more wisdom than they did when they started, but there are some who do. Amen? So let me say it again. Everything you're going through right now, if you trust God, everybody say, if I trust God. I tell you, this don't work if you don't trust God. But if you put in that ingredient of trusting God, no matter how big of a mess you've got, once you put in that ingredient of I'm going to trust God, he can take that thing, no matter how difficult it seems, and he can make it work out to something good in your life, and he can use it to help you in your future. So I want to make a suggestion to you when you're going through difficult things or you come up to confront something that's hard, don't run. <laughs> I tell you, we are experts at avoiding, evading, procrastinating, anything other than deal with something hard. But you know what? If you deal with it and get it over with, you're going to have an experience that you didn't have before, and you're going to be stronger when you come out than you were when you went in. Okay, Galatians 5.16. But I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. It's, it's a habit that we form. Responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. So life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, y'all. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, y'all. Negative thoughts are poison, they ride. Uh. Head full of flies, so here come the clouds. Uh. They'll never stop unless I can swap all the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost. Uh. Yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence So flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day.
see the word gratify? The cravings and the desires of the flesh of human nature without God. Now, it doesn't say that the cravings of the flesh will go away. It says that we won't gratify them. In other words, if we're being led by the Spirit, the flesh is not going to shut up. The sin doesn't die. We die to sin. There's nowhere in the Bible that it says sin dies. It says we are dead to sin. So that means that there's a wisdom on the inside of us. It's like, been there, done that. I don't want to keep living like that. No is my answer. No. Been there, done that, been around that mountain. My answer is no. I'm not going to compromise my integrity. No. I'm not going to compromise to get a promotion at work. No, I'd rather stay right here where I'm at, making less money and have my peace and have my joy than to have your promotion and lose my peace and lose my joy. You know, we like to lovingly say that the Holy Spirit is like God's GPS system, God's guidance and protection system. If we follow him, we'll go in the right direction and we'll be protected. So let's learn to be bold and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Today we're offering you three CDs called Living a Life That You Love. And you know, it's very important to me that I love my life and enjoy my life. I think that Jesus died to give us a great life, and he doesn't want us to be miserable any more than we want to see our children miserable. So I think these three CDs are going to help you really upgrade how you feel about and how you live the life that you have and then also a book that I really like called God's Greatest Gifts. It's about the Word of God, the name of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus. Three of the most powerful foundational principles that we need to really be well informed on. I think you're going to enjoy all of these resources. And so why don't you order yours right away? Get started on living a life that you love. And just remember, God loves you, and He has an awesome plan for your life.